In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this shadow box for a handgun. I happen to use a 1911 in this video because it is a full-size frame, which means I can put any other gun I'd like to in there as well. The backdrop there, or the, the display, is a Springfield Armory logo. Now to the human eye, it's very visible. Through the camera, it looks a, a tad bit dark. I've also decorated with some empty 45 shell casings and some dummy rounds here as well. You can use any wood you'd like, any gun you'd like, for this particular project. Dimensions, it's 10 and a half inches wide by about 6 inches deep. So let's get started. Here we are getting started. We're using the, uh, the Nick Ferry crosscut sled. Uh, got the plans, built it. I absolutely love that sled. Different angle. I'm just using regular Pine Select. It's about $20 for a a board at uh, Home Depot. Now I'm doing the dreaded dado stack change. I hate doing this. It's horrible. Here we're using the Incra box joint sled. Now this runs about $150. It's well worth the investment. This is my first time doing box joints and they came out perfectly. Uh, I would have built a $5 do-it-yourself one, but I wanted the ability to to change the uh, the, the depth or the actual width of the dado without having to build multiple sleds and here you are you can see it fits fine now I'm cutting a slot here for the plexiglass that's going to be in the front uh, it's just a cheap little plexiglass um, no big deal measuring twice now we're uh, cutting the actual channel now you'll see later in the vid for the, the back the, the backdrop or the picture I have in the back of the actual shadow box there's a, uh, a piece of wood that holds that particular picture in and I'm uh, just cutting the, the groove right here or the, the channel just making multiple passes with my my single blade there now we're fitting the plexiglass all fits good and we're gonna glue it up now clamp it about 40 minutes later we take it all out see what we got in the end looks good now we're sanding down the joints I was going to use a planer but I uh, decided to sand them and I used 80 grit to start did all the corners and just kept on going quickly I realized that I didn't have my dust collection connected so here we are with a little finer 220 and now we're getting rid of the glue on the insides here's the 220 actually and uh, you can see I got the dust collection set up on it now. And this will be the final sand for the most part. Setting up the router. We're going to actually do a little chamfer on the corners here, in the front only. Now I'm measuring for that particular, you see the channel there, measuring for the piece of that. And this is just quarter inch plywood right here. Test fit, it's good. Good to go. Go ahead and countersink and drill some holes. Now here I've got a piece of dowel rod and I'm going to use this to prop up the gun. Right now I'm getting the angle that I need to cut. Just kind of rough. I'm going to take it to the bandsaw and just cut that rough cut out right there at the bandsaw. These are some magnets. I got these from Home Depot. They're about $5. They're super strong magnets is what the actual box said. And they are really strong. Uh, to separate them, you pretty much have to uh, get a pair of pliers to do it. Now I'm mixing up some 5-minute epoxy here and I'm going to epoxy one of those magnets onto that dowel. here I'm doing the final finish of the actual box this is just a amber shellac and I wipe it off quickly right after I brush it on I just wanted the age look a little bit now the inside of this I did the same thing you could paint it black or white you can do whatever you want to with it I just did the whole thing in the shellac because I don't know what gun I will have in there at all times and it brings out to kind of ages it and it lets you see those finger joints even better. 
Now I'm just peeling off the protected uh, plastic from the actual plexiglass. And you see it's uh, super duper clear and it's all set. Now I'm just throwing some black paint on that actual dowel. Now here I've got uh, this a photo paper of the actual Springfield Armory logo and I've just put some uh, Mod Podge on the back of it and I'm cutting it out now. If I would have had more time I would have actually went to Kinko's or CVS and probably gotten an actual laser copy and I could have transferred that to the wood but I just glued it on basically. Here I am with that dowel rod. Um, was just simply um, five minute epoxy that in place. Now here we're down in the reloading room and we are getting our dies ready. We've got some 45 caliper shells. I'm depriming the ones that are going to actually house some bullets there. You can see just some lead. Um, there's no powder in them. They're just dummies. But I wanted to deprime them just, just to be safe. Don't know why. The empty shells here you can see me hot gluing on in the container. They still have the spent primers in them. I just kind of laid them wherever I thought it would look kind of good. And there's seven because a 1911 holds seven rounds. So there's seven spent primers there. Why I chose three for the actual dummy shells or the dummy completed cartridges. I don't know why I chose three. It just seemed like a good number and it looked good in the case. So that's why I chose that. And you see that five minute epoxy is holding that dowel just fine. And that's got the magnet on the end of it. That's all that's holding this particular gun up is just that magnet. And it holds it really well. Actually, when I was going to film it down here in the basement, I tilted it on its side and it did not move. That one magnet, tiny little magnet, is holding the entire firearm. Now here we are with the finished product. As I mentioned in the beginning, it, uh, it's dark in this video, but to the human eye, it is you can see it really, really well. If I did it again, maybe I would put an LED in there just so you could see it more, um, but I, I didn't, so this is what we got, finished product here. Um, again, to the human eye in a room, it, it's very, very well presented. But in this video, it, it's really hard to see. And that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks for watching.